Python Interfaces Object-Oriented Design Principles Interfaces play an important role in software engineering. As an application grows, updates and changes to the code base become more difficult to manage. More often than not, you wind up having classes that look very similar but are unrelated, which can lead to confusion. Here, you'll see how you can use a Python interface to help determine what class you should use to tackle the current problem. In this course, you'll understand how interfaces work and the caveats of Python interface creation, comprehend how useful interfaces are in a dynamic language such as Python, implement an informal Python interface, and implement a formal Python interface using Python's ABC class. Interfaces in Python are handled differently than most other languages, and they can vary in their design complexity. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of aspects of Python's data model, as well as how interfaces in Python compare to those in other languages such as Java, C++, and Go. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the standard Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Informal interfaces. At a high level, an interface acts as a blueprint for designing classes. Like classes, interfaces define methods. But unlike classes, these methods are abstract. An abstract method is one that the interface simply defines, but it doesn't implement. The implementation is done by classes, which implement the interface and give concrete meaning to the interface's abstract methods. Python's approach to interface design is somewhat different when compared to languages such as Java, Go, and C++. Java and Go have an interface keyword, while Python doesn't. Python deviates further from the other languages in one important aspect. It doesn't require the class that's implementing the interface to define all of the interface's abstract methods. In certain circumstances, you may not need the strict rules of a formal Python interface. Python's dynamic nature allows you to implement an informal interface. This interface is a class that defines methods that can be overridden, but there's no strict enforcement. This may remind you of other areas of Python, such as its approach to typing. And along with this flexibility come some potential issues, as you will see. In the first example, you'll take the perspective of a data engineer who needs to extract text from various different unstructured file types, such as PDFs and emails. You'll create an informal interface that defines the methods that will be in both the PDF parser and email parser concrete classes. Informal parser interface defines two methods, load data source and extract text. These methods are defined but not implemented. The implementation will occur once you create concrete classes that inherit from informal parser interface. As you can see, this class looks identical to a standard Python class. You rely on duct typing to inform users that this is an interface and it should be used accordingly. Duct typing says that if you have an object that looks like a duck, walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. To learn more about this, check out this real Python video. With duct typing in mind, you define two classes that implement the informal parser interface. To use the interface, you must create a concrete class. A concrete class is a subclass of the interface that provides an implementation of the interface's methods. Here, you'll create two concrete classes to implement the interface. The first is PDF parser, which you'll use to pass the text from PDF files. This concrete implementation now allows you to extract text from PDF files. But note that here it consists of a pass statement which does nothing. The implementation of the methods is not the point of this course, but instead you should focus on the structure of the classes. 
The second concrete class is Email Parser, which you'll use to pass the text from emails. This concrete implementation now allows you to extract text from email files. But note that it doesn't define extract text, but instead defines a different method, extract text from email. Let's check on the behavior of this code in the REPL. First, all the classes are imported from informal. Next, you can check whether PDF parser and email parser implement informal parser interface. Now this returns true for email parser, which poses a bit of a problem because it violates the definition of an interface. Now check the method resolution order, MRO, of PDF parser and email parser. This tells you the superclasses of the class in question, as well as the order in which they're searched for executing a method. You can view a class's MRO by using the Dunder method seen on screen. These simple informal interfaces are fine for small projects where only a few developers are working on the source code. But as projects get larger and teams grow, this could lead to developers spending a long time looking for hard to find logic errors in the code base. So in the next section of the course, you'll take a look at improved ways to implement informal interfaces using meta classes and virtual base classes.